Jelly beans, sunglasses, and another dang pen phone. All that and more in this week's episode of... Android Atlas. Welcome to Android Atlas for February 22nd, 2012. I am Justin Eckhouse alongside J. Mark Abibi. Hello. And special guest, Green Levy. Hello. Thank and you guys for having me. Thanks for coming on. Yeah. And I don't want to leave out our emperor, Stephen. Yes, the emperor I'll of the podcast emperor room. Emperor <laughs> Awesome. Dub, dubbed by the chat room, I should say. I'm not calling myself that. <clears throat> well, right, I think you right. deserve it. I think you should wear a little hood, though. <laughs> yeah, we, did, we never mm -hmm. see his face. Yes. And your face needs to be far more wrinkled than it is. <laughs> um, well, it, I think it's appropriate that you're here because I feel like this episode is at least 50% rumors. I know. And, and that, <laughs> I had nothing to do with that. I opened up this doc that said what we were talking about today. And I was like, it's catered to me. <laughs> that's that's how I love that. That's how every show goes. Exactly. We, we cater it to our guests. Uh, well, let's jump into it. Talk about our first rumor: jelly bean. Mmm, mm, jelly bean. Delicious. <laughs> I like uh, our former president Ronald Reagan. I'm a big fan of jelly beans. I agree. Me too. I remember that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> did he? He's one of them. Didn't like broccoli. Is that, that him? Was too? George, George, that was Bush. George Bush. Okay. Yeah. How do you guys know these things? Uh, I mean, what a weird, what a weird no space idea. that is taking in my brain. Monday was President's Day. I studied up a little bit on good, presidential good. food habits. That was my theme this year for presidential study. <laughs> don't you guys what, do that? Food they like to eat. Yes, exactly. Uh, anyway, let's talk about Android. I don't know why. It just seems like a good idea. Uh, so Jelly Bean is the name for the next version of Android, which we've known for almost a year now or something like that. A long time. Um, and our friends over at the Taiwan-based DigiTimes have come out with some detailed rumors about when Jelly Bean will come out and what it will be. Uh, so let's run down what they're saying. First of all, they're saying it's coming out in the second quarter and that um, you will be able to, I guess, dual boot Windows 8-based tablets to run <laughs> Android mm. and that it's basically going to be optimized for tablets and potentially netbooks or notebooks. Um, I, I thought the other one was already optimized for tablets. Right. That was the big thing with Honeycomb was that it was going to be optimized for tablets. <laughs> uh, so let's keep let's keep doing that then. Right. And Ice Cream Sandwich is also optimized for both tablets and phones, and that just right. came out. Yeah, exactly. And no phones are running it except for one pretty much. Right. So as far as Jelly Bean coming out Q2 this year, I'm going to have to say Digitimes is lying. Lying? Straight <laughs> lying. I, Maybe I they're just mistaken. You think they're, they have to be lying. It's black I mean, or white. No I, feel, I feel like Maybe they were misinformed. it's not the first time that they've lied <laughs> right. straight to your face. Well, not straight to my face. It's not like they can. I mean, they're welcome to come in and be a guest. I would like them to lie to my face. Right. That'd be more interesting. Like... Reggie Digitimes. Yeah. Come on. Come on in. <laughs> Reggie, <laughs> think that's his name? I think that's his name. Uh, <laughs> the other thing that's pretty weird about this is that if they did this, they pretty much would be killing Google's Chrome OS, which is already for notebooks. Right. Which wouldn't be a bad thing. I mean, is anyone using Chrome OS? Right. Well, that's the point. Maybe that's what they're, you know, if they give it a fun, delicious name, then maybe people <laughs> will start using it more mm, and start mm, jelly, jelly beans. beans. It's right. Like, and I mean, they are psychological. They are on this path of just colliding very soon, right? I mean, that's the way it kind of seems. Chrome and Android, it seems like at some Potentially, point. Potentially, I mean, now that like a, the Chrome browser, I mean, I don't really know what they're doing with Chrome OS. It doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me to have these different OSs, which aren't that differentiated in most consumers' mind. I mean, most consumers don't even know what Chrome OS is, right? Right. They'd be shocked to know that it exists. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think we're all in general agreement here, but what if I throw a curveball? Um, so last week, or maybe it was two weeks ago, we talked about this uh, Android at home thing. I don't think we called it Android at home, but it was kind of like the media hub concept. Uh, and so an article on Slash Gear is basically saying that they think that Android at home and Android 5.0, aka Jelly Bean, will be released at the same time, but not just at the same time, but they're really the same thing potentially. So that um, 
whatever this hub is will run Jelly Bean, and that's why it's going to be released in sort of the second quarter. Now, do you believe this? Hmm. Mm-hmm. No, I still think that Digi Times is a big liar. <laughs> <laughs> All they do is lie to my face. Oh, Reggie! Tell me more about this Android at, at home. This this hub. Um, so, based on what we heard about it last week, is that essentially it was sort of your media hub, so that it would download various TV shows and music and store it all and then distribute it to your other devices. Uh, there's not tons known about it. So so it'd but. be kind of like, I mean, what? how how is that different than Google Cloud? Or is that, that's, or it would yeah, work with the Google say. Cloud? Yeah, and then there's rumors that the Google Drive will come out, which is their, like, how you, mm-hmm. some, which is something else. <laughs> something yeah, I mean, else that's these happening. are all great questions. I think it's kind of your personal cloud almost. Okay. So that, I mean, maybe if you have a massive music collection, you don't want to keep everything there. Or maybe now that they own Motorola, this is actually your cable box. So it's your cable box plus oh, it's storing my. stuff. Okay. It's a, it's a little cloudy to me. So. <laughs> <laughs> I wow. see what you did wow. there, sir. Touche, sir. Mm. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know exactly. But I would like to know. So if you know. So interesting. So what originally when, the, when we read about this rumor and why we were saying that this doesn't seem likely is because why would they release Android 5.0 when Android 4.0 isn't anywhere yet? And nobody has ice cream sandwich, really, unless you bought the Nexus. Right, which so, I did. Which you did. So go, great. <laughs> Keep, keeping Google in business, mm-hmm. one phone at a time. So, but now it, saying that Android 5.0 is actually this Android hub or whatever, Android at home would make, kind of changes the game a little bit. That kind of changes the rumor. And then Jelly Bean might have just been to throw us a little, you know, like you said, a curveball. Right. So I don't know. Now now I maybe want to reconsider my vote about this Android Jelly Bean. Maybe it will be announced. Let me throw out one more thing there. Oh, God. That I think. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if <laughs> I can take it. Maybe sway you more. Is it possible that we're all giving Google way too much sense for being logical about their OS releases? <laughs> I mean, have they done this before? Have they shown that there is any logic to when they roll it out? And No, that's very yeah. true. Right, that's true, because then, you know, they ro- rolled out this one to only one phone, and then they rolled out Honeycomb, which was just to tablets, and Gingerbread, that was to God knows what, and then nobody right. really knows what anything is called or what version mm-hmm. number. So, yeah, you're right. Maybe maybe it's not even called Jelly Bean. <laughs> maybe it's called yeah. something else, and now we're all going to just... Yeah, I can't remember if they confirmed that or not. I feel but. like they didn't. I feel like even the name is is a rumor that you know we just thought that was the lot. It could that. just be Jello. Jello, exactly. It could Jujube. be Jujube. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Which I like that. I do, except they get stuck in your teeth. Right, that's true. You eat them at the movies. All right. Well, tell us what you think, Android at us at cnet dot com. Um, so, what did we talk about last week? It was uh, the-, the Samsung Galaxy Note. Yes. We all loved that, as I remember. <laughs> Is that how you remember it? Because it was yeah. the size of... It was great for pockets <laughs> yeah. and, and small hands. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. right. And for all of us that are just dying to write on our phone screen. Yay. With a pen. Uh, yay. Yeah, exactly. So this week, we have news of the LG Optimus View, which is also, coincidentally, a five-inch green phone-ish thing that is designed to be pen-friendly. Uh, and... Um, from our good friends over at Lucky Gold Star, um, also a Korean company. I don't it sounds know. Sounds like a restaurant. Lucky Gold Star. <laughs> yeah, that's I'm going to go I think that's eat what lunch we said at Lucky week, Gold Star. Yeah. I said it. I think uh, Emily said that last week. Oh my God. She and I are that's like on the same, on the same wavelength. wavelength. And I said I thought it sounded like a pet store. <laughs> <laughs> that's where I get my goldfish. Yeah, from Lucky Gold Star. Um, anyway, five inch tablet. What I was wondering is. I don't want to get in trouble here, but in Korea, is it just, do people really want to draw on their phones? Yeah. I yeah, mean, do, maybe. Is there something culturally that this makes sense? They want big phones that they can draw on? Do these companies like powwow and talk about, hey, let's come up with some humongous phones that are pen friendly, or did they do their own independent research? And- right. Or or they're like, oh, look, Samsung did it. We can do it too. Right. We right. Are they just copying? It. It's, it's interesting that like in the past, you know, phones and tablets and everything are getting smaller and then now they're getting bigger 
And then what, you know, and then are they going to get smaller again? Did you guys see Zoolander when mm-hmm. he's like talking on his little phone <laughs> yes. and he's like, hello? And that's like the cool thing is right. his phone is the size, you know, of a nickel. And then now <laughs> it's like this big, now he's talking on a tablet, basic or phablet, which is the lamest new <laughs> <laughs> coined like term, a phablet. Yeah, I mean, the pH. what I, we kind of ref- referenced this a little bit last week. What you're saying is, do people actually want this or do manufacturers just for some reason think that people want big phones? Because I don't think I have met someone yet who's like, oh, yeah, I really want a five inch phone. I mean, even <laughs> I who bought a big phone, <laughs> right. didn't I didn't really, really want, want it this big. Yeah. I just wanted the other things that this phone had. Do you find that phone because how big is that? What, 4.3 inches? It's about 35 feet. Yeah, so I mean, it's about the size of a huge billboard. Mm-hmm. Um, do you find that phone cumbersome? Is it hard to handle? It's not as bad as I thought. I mean, I went from the Incredible, which is you know much smaller, mm-hmm. to this, and I thought I was very worried. It's not bad. Um, this bigger screen. I mean, it's nice. Again, I don't necessarily think I would choose it, but it's not as bad as I thought. But yeah, this is four point three, 4.4. Right. So compared to five is a lot bigger. Five, you know, when Jessica Dolcourt was reviewing the Galaxy Note and so she had one and she was walking around with it and like taking pictures with it. And I was like, that is huge. Like you don't know what <laughs> you're dealing with and then you see it in person. But I have to say, I played around with the stylus and I used to have, you know, a whatever it was, what a palm, trio, a trio, mm-hmm. a palm bio, whatever, like and never loved the stylus. I have a Nintendo DS, have a stylus, don't love it, whatever. But playing around with the stylus with that thing, especially the one that's a little bit bigger, that's like a pen-sized stylus, is actually kind of awesome. And it's super responsive. And I don't know, maybe my next phone will be a 12-inch ga- <laughs> Galaxy, <laughs> whatever, Note 2. That's I look forward to you that day when you come on. You can discuss <laughs> yeah, that. and I'm like talking, it's like the size of an iPad, and you're like, hello? <laughs> yes, I'd like to make a phone call. You need f- two hands and help. <laughs> can you hold, hold this it. up? I need to make a phone call. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so just one correction by screen size is 4.65 inches, so hold your complaint emails oh. that I don't know what I'm talking about Yeah, please. for other stories, because clearly I don't. <laughs> uh, anyway, this phone... Sorry to disappoint you. Won't be available in the U.S. immediately. It will show up in Korea first next month, initially running Gingerbread. Yes, Ooh. then who even cares? Two major releases. Yeah, exactly. It's not going to be running Jelly Bean? If it's not running <laughs> yes. Jelly Bean Jujubee, then why do we even care about this 25-foot monster of a phone? Or Kit Kat? It's not going to be running. I know, Kit, Kit Kat. Kat. It could be called Korean. I, I was looking forward to Lemon Bar, actually. <laughs> oh, Lemon Bar. Uh, it's dual core, 1.5 gigahertz. Um, but they do expect to roll Ice Cream Sandwich out within three months, or so they say. Why don't they just wait three months? I don't know. Why don't they? Or why don't we I'm all just switch dude. to the BlackBerry Playbook? What do you think? Yeah. I heard good <laughs> things about that. <laughs> Haven't you? No? Mm, well, well, the new OS just came out. BlackBerry Playbook OS 2.0. And, I mean, the reason I think that we care about it is that they make it easier to for developers to port their apps, their Android apps, over to the BlackBerry OS. Right. So they've pretty much given up on BlackBerry development at this point, right? And right. Like, all right. <laughs> because all of their people are getting arrested and they're too drunk to, <laughs> to do it, to make any more apps. So they're like, you know what, you guys, you do it. You seem to be doing Let's a good poach job. poach the Android developers. I mean, who can blame them? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think this wasn't that hard for them because it's, you know, Android apps are just sort of Java based and it's pretty easy to get sort of a Java runtime environment on your operating system versus like trying to port iOS apps where it's a subjective C thing that not is not widely supported. Um, so what's the, I guess the process is you just take your existing app and run yeah. it through this thing and it repackages it. Yeah. I think there's a down a uh, Blackberry packager and then you, you know, you upload your APK into there and then it turns it into whatever a Blackberry runs, which I think it's like a bar app. jar jar jar. Yeah. Bar. I don't know. You're going to have to go to the bar at some point. Bar. (laughs) (laughs) You bar. Um, And apparently it doesn't show up. I mean, I can't imagine it's like looks like a native app the same exact way that a native app would be developed. Right. But I haven't (laughs) seen it. And I guess it doesn't always work for everything. Like there's probably some low level apps that are 
you know, making calls to hardware that only Android has. That just don't <laughs> leave, leave it to BlackBerry to come up with this thing that only works like part of the time. <laughs> and then when it doesn't work, they're like, mm, sorry, it didn't work. We don't know why. We don't know if but, it ever will. But email still works great on BlackBerry. Right. And so you know what? And the, email. Those keyboards are unbeatable. I used to have a BlackBerry. Loved Except for it. the Playbook that doesn't have a keyboard. Uh, the Playbook. Oh, yeah. I don't know. The Playbook blows my mind. But <laughs> a, a, whatever. I won't even get into it. But I had a BlackBerry. Mm -hmm. I loved As it. As did I. I loved it. I like to send email on it. Yeah. I had the Pearl. Yeah. And then the Ooh. pearl broke. I had the pearl, and, and it was then no I had... longer a pearl phone. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I then know. I had a, um, I had a curve. Oh, and then curve, the torch. Yes. I had the torch, the one with like wow, lead. I was a that's serious. Blackberry. I mean, I went, I was all in it. And then you realized, you learned about the World Wide Web. Exactly, and then I realized <laughs> that there was uh, there was more beyond my front door. I started using this thing called Netscape Navigator. <laughs> right, and then when I was on AOL, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was I was a CompuServe guy. Um, <laughs> anyway, let's talk about other geeky stuff, other OSs that you could potentially run on your Android phone or vice versa. Poor segue there. Ubuntu. <laughs> I, I actually got it. You got it? All right. I didn't get it, <laughs> and I was saying it. <laughs> so there has kind of been this trend of uh, trying to use your phone as your desktop computer because we love convergence and stuff like that. Uh, there was a Motorola web tops, I think they were called, where you could sort of dock it. You get the specialized UI um, that was only available, you know, when it was docked and it was optimized for your keyboard and mouse. And it was still Android, though. It was just a new UI. And that didn't really catch on. Um, so now let's try again. Uh, Ubuntu, the I guess the company behind it, uh, Canonical, I think is the name, um, has developed Ubuntu for Android. And what that means is sort of the same thing that you have your phone and you take it and you dock it in your Ubuntu docking thing. And uh, you then have your monitor and your keyboard and your mouse and suddenly you're using Ubuntu. So the phone is still Android and looks totally, it is 100% Android, except when you dock it, when it turns to Ubuntu. Um, and... I don't really, I don't know. Do we want this? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, you know what? I think any, when you can run two things simultaneously, when you dock it, it's like Linux, which everybody loves Linux, I guess. I don't, I've never, I don't know. <laughs> I just make that up. But I mean, it, Android is, well, it's not, is it Linux? It's, it's Linux Unix. Based. Yeah, Unix, it's Linux. Right, so it's the same idea. Right, it's right. open source, which is cool. And if it has, you know, a different skin or whatever when you when you dock it that's and and all of your contacts and messages and everything it's all shared seamlessly then it's basically like their version of the web web top thing right. but with you know, a more complete operating system exactly when you dock it so great what bring it bring it on Love i it. like the concept here i just don't know if people actually want to ubuntu um so this is something that's going to be uh preloaded into specific devices, I'm assuming. Is that right? Right. So they're looking for manufacturing partners right now. It's not a download that you can go out and get right now or potentially any time ever. It's, you know, I think they want to sign deals with people who are going to make phones that can be docked. Um, so I, I don't know. I, I think if you just are looking for sort of a Chromebook type of computer, a netbook, um, or you don't really care about the apps on there so much, um, then this might work because you're like, oh, now I can use like full Chrome in a desktop environment or Firefox, you know, because there are a bunch of Linux apps out there that are good. Um, but if you, you know, I think most people want to use stuff that is either Windows or OS 10. So right. it's not gonna, it's not going to be the same thing. It's not necessarily going to replace that until. We are 100% cloud-based, and everything is just cloud. And I don't think we're quite there yet, but we're pretty pretty close. I think I agree, and I think that that's what Google or whoever is making this is banking on, is that we are getting really close. And that the people who would use this, like, I wouldn't use this, but the people who do or who Don't use, knock until you try it. I, well, that's true. Okay, you're right, you're right. I, you I use a BlackBerry, after all. Come on. <laughs> I know. If you use a BlackBerry, you can basically use anything in the whole world. Um, but... 
people who do use this or who find this cool or useful will definitely, I think, jump on board and would would find this even more useful once it, uh, uh, you know, go go. What is it? Goes seamlessly, shares seamlessly with with mm-hmm. you know with all their other apps and stuff. So I do like the concept a lot. I mean, I you know if if, if I could do the same thing with Windows or OS ten on my phone, I think that would be pretty cool. Um, all right, we are all going to brush our teeth, but stick around, and we'll be <laughs> right back after this break. your mouth feel good now minty fresh mm-hmm. minty minty fresh um so let's talk about toothbrushes. um there's this beam brush is this your story do you want to intro us sure to, uh, sure talk I, d- I didn't write this story well okay. but there is a, a beam I can brush see that amanda <laughs> <laughs> But there's a, a new beam brush which connects to an Android app that coaches you. It coaches you <laughs> on brushing your teeth. Um, yeah, I mean, optimal brushing time is two minutes per session, and it it helps you reach that optimum time, apparently. So the deal is this is an app that connects to their special toothbrush, uh, and the toothbrush has replaceable heads, but it's, it's a manual toothbrush that times you. Um, $50 to time yourself. Because you're yes. supposed to brush for two minutes. Two minutes. Yes. To get the full <laughs> effect of t- brushing. Right. right. <laughs> you have to brush for two minutes. So, yes. I, $50. $50. $50. Well, how much is a, you know, one of the, the... This is what I would like to talk about, yes. So I have a Sonicare, which I think I bought for 50 or $60. Right, you can get them at Costco, and they're probably around Pretty the cheap, price. and uh, it's electric, which is better than manual, I think for mm-hmm. most purposes and it has built in two minute timer right oh, wow. so this is this is a manual toothbrush this it is doesn't a even one. do it for you yeah. so for 50 for the same price you have something that does it for you that does it for you oh, yeah forget this thing and forget if you, it. Go, if if you spend like this. 60 or 70 bucks you can get not only the two minute timer but one that like beeps every 30 seconds to tell you to oh. switch quadrants in your mouth wow <laughs> that's awesome but, but, you're gonna start your gums are bleeding <laughs> that's when you have to switch here's it's, the question though does your uh, sonic care connect to your android device what is the point of connecting to the, <laughs> nope. it just tells you like how good you did that day it just it times you i don't know i'm just trying to you know i'm just trying to give them some credit i don't know so <laughs> let me tell you guys about the toothbrush that my in-law got for me it's a Justin Bieber toothbrush, and it has to, each toothbrush, it's manual as well. It doesn't connect to an Android app, thank God, because that's embarrassing. <laughs> but it plays a Justin Bieber song for how long you're supposed to be brushing. Oh, wow. So I think that's, way more, that's way more useful than this. I think that's way geekier than this yeah. thing. So and you can you, dance to it. You can dance. You get your exercise. You get your two minutes of brush time. You have Justin Bieber <laughs> in, the, in, the, in your mouth. In your mouth. No. Okay, no. I'm throwing it away. Forget it. I, I think that's want... the way to go. I think um, I I actually got sent a toothbrush here uh, like a year or two ago that sings the bare, simple bare necessities. Oh, I love oh, that. Cool. See, that's cuter yeah. than. So that's what my son has used for a long time because yeah. it's timed as well. And then like halfway through, it says, good job. Keep going. Oh, my God. I haven't gotten, (laughs) I I haven't really used my Justin Bieber toothbrush because it's too humiliating. But even though I'm by myself in the bathroom brushing my (laughs) teeth, I'm like too humiliated to use it. I'm like, I hate myself. But I haven't, I wonder if he said, maybe I'll use it tonight and see. I'll I'll get back to you guys and see. Maybe he said, if he talks to me at the end and is like, good job, Mm -hmm. sold, done. I'm gonna and use it. I don't want to ruin buy one for all my friends. I, I think you should. I don't want to ruin your uh, your gift or anything, but just so our audience knows, the Justin Bieber toothbrush brush at Walgreens is nine ninety nine. Oh, she oh could buy God. five of those for the S- price exactly, of this thing. and they'll. Know, I mean, Are there different songs available? Oh, you can get a yeah. It's I I got two of them. One of them. Oh when, wow. It, <laughs> one oh, of wow. them plays. <laughs> excuse me. One was purple. One was yellow. One of them plays baby, baby, baby. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know what the name of that song is. <laughs> baby, baby, that one. And it, and then it also does uh, now. Uh, never say never. Never say never. And I think and one of them's. Uh, 
you cry, I cry, that one. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I'm like talking to this. <laughs> this <laughs> hello, <laughs> is anybody, is this thing on? <laughs> like, nobody knows what I'm talking about except for Steven, <laughs> yeah. who knows all the songs. Well, I was looking at, like, it looks like there's like this graphic things here. Does it like measure your frequency too? It I think that's like per a... every day how long you brush that day. Oh, see, okay. if it measured like oh, yeah, how enough. hard you're brushing or did anything besides just be a timer, um, yeah, you know, you could get a stopwatch pretty cheaply. It also looks it's like totally. your phone actually names. has a stopwatch. You can you can get that app for it's free. It's true. You can you can do a duck mm -hmm. timer. You know, duck you timer. can also sing to yourself, as we were talking about earlier, that you can, one of the commenters on this story was like, you could just sing the ABC song, which is what they teach to infants mm -hmm. <laughs> to, you know what when you're brushing your teeth you can I, just sing i watched that the to godfather series right and so, <laughs> so. jamar is brushing his teeth for so long that his face melts off <laughs> into bleeding gums yeah there you go <laughs> all right so uh we apologize to the people at uh beam brush but work harder next time come on but here this next thing uh speaking of android connected devices I love. So Android powered Google glasses, or you might call them Google goggles, huh? huh? Wow. Well, <laughs> nah. um, Trademark, copyright, 2011. Thank you. Uh, yeah, these are, did you talk about these on Rumor Has It? We did a yay or nay section okay. about these. And incidentally, I won a point because of this. Um, mm. Emily Dreyfus said that they were mm -hmm. not coming out. And I said that they are. And lo and behold, she has to humiliate herself. Well, I will say weeks. this is still a rumor, I think, because it's from an anonymous Google source. Um, that's good enough for me. Oh, it's good enough for you. <laughs> <It's> okay. <right. laughs> All right. Well, I just want to clarify for our audience and let them make, their own judgment, but this anonymous Google employee is saying by the end of 2012, Google will launch a pair of Android-powered augmented reality heads-up display glasses that are basically like the Oakley Thumps, um, which I guess are kind of cool except for the ear piece sticking out the side. But, you know, what do I know about cool? Um, they'll have three or four G connectivity, forward-facing camera, GPS, and a full array of movement centers, and they will cost around the price of current smartphones. <laughs> they so, will cost around the price of that toothbrush. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think a lot more Millions than that. Millions of dollars. 600 bucks or something like that? Wow. wow. So you could imagine that these basically turn you into the Terminator. Yes. Do they have Great. Laser without, without the Sold. muscles. Do oh, forget it then. I don't want it. For $600, uh, I want the muscles too. Well, you can get that for six hundred dollars. You just have to pay a trainer, <laughs> right? For for your steroids. Does it say There's what operating thing. system it's running? Is it's it, Android. Is this I, I, ice cream sandwich. Oh, oh. <laughs> it's all it's running Froyo. <laughs> yeah, it's run, it's running donut. It only uh, works part of the time. Your Terminator glasses run ice cream sandwich. That doesn't, that doesn't sound very that was very, very weak. cool. Yeah. Um. So you can imagine you put these on what we're saying in the morning, and uh, it tells you what the traffic is like and um you know you're walking down the street and you're like oh that girl's kind of cute and it brings up her google plus profile takes her picture mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. that's Gets not stalkerish at all kind of creepy so. but if you think about like the, if you've used the yelp uh what's it called monocle yeah which is pretty awesome like you hold that up and you can just look down the street and it shows you the name of every business and how it's rated um i don't you could see coupons for businesses as you're walking down the street i see people bumping into each other all over the place with these. totally they're because they're not. trying to like and go to the frozen yogurt place and yeah. so is everybody else is and they can't see each other an yeah augmentation uh, i think this just goes to sh i mean android is super fragmented right it's on every device in the world it's on it's on a lot of different phones and now it's going to be in glasses too like how much more what else are they going to put it on like where where else where else can we go yeah. after this this is what is great about Android. This is this is where you have you can put it anywhere you want. In a toothbrush. Yeah. In your glasses, it's in your not coffee cup. Limited, like some other operating systems, which we're no longer allowed to mention on the show. Apparently, <laughs> I know it does not exist on this show. Right. Anyway, I want these. So you got you don't you're not in no muscles, um, no in. I don't know. I would have to see what they look like. I'm too vain, right I think. There. To there's your picture. There. If, they look like <laughs> yeah, if they if they make me look like the Terminator, yes. Um, you got to get rid of the Bluetooth thing because that's kind of like, yeah, that is no. Well, good. that's not them. No, right? that's those just, are the Oakley. Yeah. Those um, play music. So those these are like, actually exist. Yeah, we did a review on them back when uh, uh, 
Jasmine was here. Okay. So she did a review on them, and those are like for skiing. So they play music through, I think it's Bluetooth, and their glasses. So they're, I mean, it's all inclusive. So now add to that augmented reality and Google Wallet, and you've got a pair of Google. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I want up. these. It's just, it's like a snow crash. Have you guys read that? It's, mm -mm. All right. Well, this is what it's like. <laughs> We all live in our own little connected, jacked-in world with our goggles. So we don't. We wouldn't even be able to talk to each other. I would just have to text you, and then it would come up in your. And yeah, then I would you text just, you with my eyes. I just, yeah, <laughs> you, can, <laughs> then, you could just nod your mm -hmm. response. Exactly. Phew! This will just make things so much easier. Um, all right, wrapping up really quickly here. Google has filed a patent for a Siri-like voice control thing. Um, basically. To connect with your TV. So the idea here um, is that, sorry, I'm having trouble on our own site loading this article. <laughs> um, that unlike, so I guess Apple TV is rumored to come out with voice control with Siri so that you could talk to your TV essentially and say, play me Android Atlas. Um, and it would just load up, the download the podcast and play it for you. Uh, Google's gone a different route and basically... They're going to have voice control to control your TV, but it's going to be connected to your phone or your tablet. So you talk to the device, which you probably have right there in front of you rather than something that's across the room. And if you have your speakers up really loud, maybe it doesn't work as well. I kind of like this approach. Um, right. Rather than yelling yell. at your t TV, yeah. Yeah. you're yelling at your phone that you're already yelling at anyway. Exactly. Yeah. yeah I do wonder about the delay, though. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, I figure it's going to be, it's not going to be connected directly to your TV. It'll be through Wi Fi and then back to your TV, right? So, yeah. yeah. I mean, there are, it's true. I have used some devices like second screen apps like Google or not Google TV. Um, TiVo has an app for iPad where you can pause and play and fast forward um, over Wi Fi and it actually works really fast. I mean, okay. I think we've become used to our TVs. Being so slow at this point to change channels and stuff like that, right? That this wouldn't even be that much slower, right? Necessarily. Um, but how didn't uh, the Connect doesn't isn't that doing something where you can yell yeah. or do this? The Connect does do that. I have the... that. It's. Um, I mean, I think generally, I kind of think this stuff is a little not the most useful feature to put it nicely. Uh, the Connect stuff especially gets me very aggravated when I'm just like it's like. Do this to pause. Change the channel. <laughs> you, you look like a lunatic. I look like a cheerleader. <laughs> yeah. Um, that doesn't work very well. The voice stuff actually works surprisingly well, even when a movie is playing. But you know what works really well? A remote the control. The remote control. It just works. <laughs> that, right. just, I just it know just it. It just works. My yeah. hand. To talk to it. Well, what's, I mean, the, the cool thing about the Connect is, yeah, that the voice thing kind of works, but you do have to say, like, stock phrases like yeah. Xbox, Xbox, uh, Hulu, whatever. You know, you yeah, have to yeah. say stock phrases. And the thing with Siri was that it would be a little bit more conversational. So it'd be like Siri channel two, please, or whatever you say. Right. Next, and so next, ne next, yeah, <laughs> next, next. <laughs> next. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. If you can accomplish, you know, 10 different button clicks with one phrase, like their example is when is Seinfeld on? So if I want to do that with my remote, I'd have to load up the guide and, go to search and then type in Seinfeld with a remote, which is hard. Right. So that stuff makes sense. Basically, like volume up, volume down. Um, yeah, I mean, and, and, and like pulling up the guide and like finding a channel, it's not like that's like making you sweat and is like, the you know, a hard task. So it's funny that they're like making a problem out of something that's not even a problem. Mm -hmm, <laughs> and yeah. then, you know, creating a solution for it, and which is, you know, talking to your TV, which, you know, how... A rem you're right. A remote control is pretty easy to do as it is. Right. And, and it's already there and it's free. It comes with your TVR. <laughs> right. we, we don't always know what we want to watch, you know, so I can't always say w what channel is Seinfeld on. Right. So or you show have, me Seinfeld. So you would say bring up the guide, which yeah. you could just do with a button press or if, anyway. if it could answer the question, um, just find some find something I like or what do I want to watch right now? Mm-hmm. Then, yeah, and then it can show, like, <laughs> that's cool. Then, then it knows your mind. Yes. But yeah. um, Google TV is so, I mean, it doesn't, it's not working that great, I thought. Yeah, but this maybe will work with the new Android at home thing we talked about earlier in the show, which everyone's going to have. That's Jujube. true. Jujube. Jujube, 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 J
uh, this thing can do one other thing, which is it can work sort of as a home automation device potentially. So you could say, you know, turn on my TV or whatever and do stuff before you even actually start to interact with the TV itself. Now, if I could control all of this with my glasses, that's a whole other story. Exactly. Well, and maybe that's the next, you know, the next iteration of this is that you just blink, blink. and then it turns on whatever you want oh, it no, to. No, that was a real blink. Ah, oh, yeah, I don't don't change the channel. This is important. All right, uh, I think that is our news. But I think you have a app of the week. Uh, sort of. Angry Birds. Have you guys heard of Angry Birds? No. <laughs> no, tell please, me more. please tell yeah. me about this. Okay. How do you pre- Angry Birds? Angry Birds. Angry Birds, yes. gotcha. Mm. B I R D S. Anyway, Angry Birds Space is the next iteration of the game and it's supposed to come out on March 22nd. Um, we're we're assuming it's for both um, Android and that other OS that we don't want to mention here. That that which cannot be named. Yes, Voldemort. The Voldemort, OS. uh-huh. Um, but yeah, I think we're going to have to deal with uh, gravity issues and all kinds of things that happen in space. Asteroids. I'm just making this up at this point. But there is there is a short video um, teasing the release. It is so scary. So epic. <laughs> it's so awesome. Are we sure that's a game and not like a movie trailer? Yeah, I think it's pretty pretty strange. God, the Angry Ooh. Birds movie. There'd be oh no my. script. Like Rio, right? I mean, but yeah, it but would star um, what's his name, Benjamin Button. What's his name, Brad Pitt? Oh, definitely. <laughs> As the Benjamin blue Button. Ben- <laughs> that's all I think about it when I think about his name. Um, uh, God bless Angry Birds. It's gotten me through some boring times, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> waiting for the train. But you know, I'm glad office. they're I'm glad they're switching it up, putting it in space. Agreed. Adding new physics. Agreed. I think it's it looks. I mean, well, I know nothing about it other than that trailer that everybody just saw. <laughs> right. It looks great. It looks cool. Right. Uh, all right. Let's do some email. Android Atlas at cnet uh, First one is from our good friend Larry David. Uh, Justin, thanks for addressing my email on the last episode of Android Atlas. While I'm not the real Larry David. Oh, oh bummer. Right. Should I even read the rest of this email? Yeah, forget it. I don't want to know. <laughs> so it's not the real Larry David or the real Stephen Colbert. I do admire their work. Um, so basically, it's sort of addressing the whole Google Voice uh, making Wi-Fi calls thing. Um, hey, there. There he is. <laughs> There's Larry. There you go. Um and he basically says that, yeah, I mean, some of them are kind of subverting Google uh, to use VoIP um, to make calls. But some of them are actually VoIP on their own, and they are just – they're their own service, and you're forwarding your Google Voice number to this other service, which is also kind of a weird workaround hack that I'm not a fan of. So basically, you're right. It, they're not all subverting Google service, but they're all hackish. And I, I just want a real service that works. Um, and then, uh, he says, and a warm wo- work, work, wow, <laughs> and a warm welcome to Jamar, no matter what his proximity to the mic is. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Shout out to Jamar. Happy android Um, let's see. The next one is from Mike in Portland. Dear Android Alice gang, just started listening to the podcast a couple weeks ago, but am enjoying them very much. I now look forward to them every week. He used to only look forward to them every other week. Right. Now, now he's he bumped, <laughs> bumped up a level. Uh, I have to admit that the podcast benefited, benefited greatly from the presence of the lovely and talented Emily Dreyfus. Absolutely. That is true. Love yes. us some Am- Emily Dreyfus. We all do. We're all fans. Emily's energy and, it is an, and infectious laugh are a good balance to the low-key, low-volume wisdom <laughs> of Justin. And the new one. Jamar, is it? <laughs> it is. It is. In fact, I'm willing to strike a bargain on Emily's behalf. If Ooh. she promises to make regular appearances on the podcast, I will promise to purchase a new Android phone recommended by Android Atlas team and act as a volunteer newbie guinea pig. I am a complete Luddite when it comes to consumer technology. All right, let's just stop right here. I don't really care about the rest of this email. Uh, how do we feel about this deal? This I'm, I'm all deal. for it. I'm sure Emily Dreyfus would love to come on the show as a regular regular guest 
Right. And so that this person can have a high class recommendation from you guys on the phone that they're going to use. Yeah. What so do I, what do we get out of this? So we get to recommend you... the <laughs> crappiest phone ever. And have them be a <laughs> guinea pig and test apps for you. Hmm. Hmm. And they get Emily every week. I know. Who wins in this situation? Who wins? What kind of a deal is this? Well, we would also get Emily. Well, Mike does say, anyway, it sounds like a win-win situation for all. (laughs) Google Android gets a new customer. Android Ask gets a new smartphone-toting listener, and I get a new phone and regular access to the cheerful musings of Miss Dreyfus. (laughs) Love the show and keep up the good work. We'll round it by Emily, and we'll get back to you on that one. I'll uh, I'll answer for her. Yes. Oh, look at that. (laughs) (laughs) She says yes. Um, all right. So we got this email from Adam from Utah. Hey, Android Atlas. While listening to you guys talk about the pros and cons of the stylus on the Galaxy Note, I began thinking of a concept for an Android tablet that would stand head and shoulders above the iPad in terms of graphic design capabilities. It would be a 10 to 13 inch Android tablet designed by Wacom and Adobe. The tablet would be full featured and have higher end specs, but would also utilize the pen interface technologies like the one and the Wacom Intuos drawing tablets, I'm probably mispronouncing half the brand names in this email. Uh, To complete the package, it will also come preloaded with a full feature version of Adobe Photoshop that was made specifically for Android with the option to purchase other Android optimized Adobe Creative Suite apps online. The concept is just wishful thinking, but I want to know what you guys thought about it. Would anyone, including Steven, considering buying such a device? Do you think it would be successful or even commercially viable if it was priced at or below seven hundred dollars, uh, blah 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 blah. Uh, love the show, Adam from Utah. All right, so seven hundred dollar Adobe Photoshop tablet, Android based. Uh, he's asking you, Stephen. I'm not really into Photoshop or art drawing. That is, I like. Music. I hate art. <laughs> I mean, I'm not like an artist drawing stuff, so I probably wouldn't be into it. And seven hundred dollars, that's that's a lot. That is a lot. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I they they do have a, a lot of they don't have exactly Creative Suite but they have a bunch of Adobe Adobe apps for Android yeah. but they're not pen based right <clears throat> right right I mean I think it I actually think it's a good idea but I don't think it needs to be a Wacom Adobe collaboration I think you know it could be LG or Samsung yeah I think what they would have to do is just you know step up their their pen game maybe incorporate some wacom technology and then adobe would have to optimize their apps for that pen technology and i don't think this is actually too far off we talked about rumors last week that the samsung uh note stuff was actually going to come to a samsung galaxy tab 10 inch tablet potentially even at mobile world congress yeah, I mean, why not? That the technology really like until you've tried drawing with that thing, mm-hmm. like you don't realize how awesome it is and how uh, effective it is. So, sure, bring it to a bigger. Then you don't even need your t- whack them, whack them, wake them. Wait, I'm talking about like whack em all, like whack em all, whack em all. Is that whack-a-mole? how you say it? I thought it was like Antoine wake-a-mole? told me it was whack em. Oh, <laughs> I always he has said like wake a design em. degree. I always said wake em too. Oh, what but do we know? Like, I have design Clearly, degree, we blah, hate blah, art. Blah, blah. <laughs> yes, <laughs> the three of us hate <laughs> art. So yeah, I mean, bring it, bring it. Yeah, bring I, it on. Good idea, Adam. Um, all right, who wants to read this next one? I think someone wanted to do it with an accent. Which one of you was this? I think it was Jamar. Okay, all right. Put your face to the mic. Hey, Android Atlasers. I was sad to see Antoine leave the show, but on the other hand, I'm happy to hear Jessica Delcourt. I like her very much. <laughs> oh my I goodness. hope I didn't I hope I didn't murder her name. What? What? I hope nope. I didn't mutter her name. <laughs> but I suspect I did, sorry. Mooter. Signed Edgar the Mafia Boss. Yeah. We're not gonna make fun of that because he's the mafia boss. Yeah, he's, please. Just go to the next one. That was just my one. best mafia boss mm-hmm. voice. I wasn't making fun of him. Thanks. Thanks for your email. Uh, all right, next one from Ali, Justin, and JMR. I love the show. Thanks for the news updates. I am a T-Mobile customer with 16 months left left on my contract, and I would like to change my LG G2X to another Android phone with a larger screen without losing 4G speed. Do you know if I get the unlocked GSM Galaxy Nexus or Galaxy Note, uh, will I still be able to use 4G on the T-Mobile network? Is there any other large screen Android phones except the Samsung S2 that you can advise? Keep up the good work and bring Emily back on the show. More often, she is fun. Everybody loves 
Emily Dreyfus. Emily, Emily, <laughs> Emily, 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 Emily. I'm just going to leave now. I'm not going to even answer your question. <laughs> Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Marsha, Marsha. Well, I will say that I didn't know the answer to your question. So I went to our cell phone expert, Jessica. Sorry, what was Del- her Delcourt. name? Delcourt. Delcourt. Don't moot her her name. <laughs> I will not moot her. And she says that uh, he could potentially use an unlocked version of the T-Mobile, but I can't vouch that he'll get the same speed or voice clarity as if the phone were optimized for the network. And I'll, I'll also add one other thing, that if you're just looking to buy this because you're in a contract, you could still, you can like cancel your contract for potentially less than you can buy a new unlocked phone for. So it might be like 200 bucks to cancel your contract, but $600 to buy the Galaxy Nexus out of contract. So maybe it's better just to kill your contract or something like that. Uh, so you could, I would encourage you, if that's all you're trying to get around to, just go and talk to T-Mobile and see what your options are there. But um, And then if you want other advice, go to reviews.cnet.com and click on our best cell phones list. And we have it organized by carrier, and there's a good list for T-Mobile. Anything else on this one? All right. Nope. Let's listen to voicemail from our favorite caller, Jerry from Toronto. Hey, guys, this is Jerry from Toronto. Well, the best thing since 4.0 is coming out for Android, and that's the Chrome browser. It's in beta right now, and uh, fantastic. I First thing I thought when I got my Android phone was I hate the browsers on this. And the beauty is you will be able to go between your Chrome browser on your computer to your Chrome browser on your Android, seamlessly. So bring up one thing on your computer, and it'll be on your phone and vice versa. Fantabulous. <laughs> Have fun, guys. He Bye-bye. loves it. He loves it. Who wouldn't love that? That's great. Thanks for the call, Jerry. I like the Chrome browser as well. Uh, I'm sorry that everyone can't use it yet. Uh, all right, so I think we have one more email from Sam, who has some interesting opinions voicemail. on, uh, yeah, voicemail from Sam about uh, Jessica. Let's Jessica listen to Jessica Delcourt. That. Delcourt, <laughs> yes. Hi, this is Sam. Just finished watching Android Atlas Weekly, and uh, I have to say, um, I think Jessica Delcourt might be a spy for Apple. <laughs> uh, she uh, definitely touted off how good uh, the uh, iPhone apps were on. Uh, on iPhone twice. <gasps> Anyways, uh, also finding out your sound guy is also an iPhone guy. It just <laughs> left me a little bit confused and wondering if I made the right choice calling with Android. I think I did, but you never know. All right, just wanted to make that observation. Uh, I actually like Jessica Dalcourt on the show. She adds a a lot to the to the experience. Uh, and Jamar, I think you need to speak up sometimes. Sometimes it's a little hard to hear you. Anyways, other than that, I think everything's great. Uh, great show. Uh, I'm going to keep watching. Thanks. Bye. Cool. Even though you guys mentioned that, which cannot be named twice, <laughs> I'll it. still listen, I guess. Oh. <laughs> Even though you're all spies. What? <laughs> what? What I don't get is uh, how that equates her to a spy. Right, because she mentioned it twice. Mm-hmm. That would mean she's the worst spy in the exactly. world. Exactly. Maybe she's <laughs> like a propagandist or I don't know what the right, right. word is Spre- here. Sp- she, evang- evangelical. Yes. Right. Mm-hmm. She's uh, bringing, bringing <laughs> the Apple mission. I said it. Uh-oh. Oh. I might be an Apple spy too. Leave now. I think we need like <laughs> a little it. dunce cap that you need to wear <laughs> when you say that on the show. Oh, my God. Can we all focus on the important part of this voicemail, though? I have gone to great lengths to increase the volume. I'm going to turn you up even more. Uh, yes, please. Oh, my God. I'm so proud. Yes. That's good. You really took his, his I, uh, right. note. <laughs> Sam, I hope, I hope this, this helps, at I least a little bit. I hope you can hear. Yes. I hope you can hear, J-Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for that email. That was, whoa, whoa. Whoa, oh, my God. Oh, echo, echo. That was great. Uh, if you'd like to call us and leave a clearly not insane voicemail, <laughs> Please call 866-344-CNET, 866-344-2638. If you do have an insane voicemail to leave us, just call 911. <laughs> don't really. 5150. Do yeah, don't do that. Uh, you can get all the Android news all week long at cnet.com slash Android Atlas. You can watch us every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Pacific, cnet.com slash live. 
Send us email, androidatlas at cnet.com. Follow the show on Twitter at Android Atlas. Follow JMR on Twitter at JMR Kabibi. Correct. Do we have that on the screen? Hey, look at that. Uh, or you can follow me at not my real name. Or follow me, Kareen Levy, on Twitter. <laughs> Tweet. And Tweet me. you have a show. I have a show every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Pacific called Rumor Has It, and it's with the lovely Emily Dreyfus, who we couldn't stop talking about today. She's great. The show's all about rumors, so check us out. I'm sure all the email is going to be about you next week. Oh, I hope so. I hope it's it's like, green. put your mouth next to the mic. <laughs> <laughs> Please, yeah. All right. Well, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Absolutely. Emperor Stephen. Absolutely. for having me. And uh, we will see you all next week. Android Atlas. Wait, wait.